I'm sure this will come as no surprise to any of you, but cars are expensive to build. So how is Tesla planning on having the cost of their next generation vehicle versus the Model 3? Well, it's all about the batteries. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So yeah, it's a little bit of an overstatement to say it's all about the batteries. It's all about everything. The Giga castings and everything obviously make a huge difference too. But the most expensive single component of an electric vehicle, and probably always will be, is the batteries. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about how Tesla's next generation vehicle, the one that's going to be built in Mexico, is going to be built using new technology for batteries that will allow the vehicles to be that much cheaper cheaper. So first of all, about how much does a Tesla Model 3 battery pack cost? Well, the best I could do was find replacement costs where it said that the parts for a battery pack, so replacing the whole thing, if you had to, would be about $13,500, plus there are labor costs involved and stuff like that too. So Tesla obviously, you know, makes some profit when they do something like this. So we can, you know, ballpark that it's somewhere on the order of $10,000. And that's for a, you know, approximately 70, 75, kilowatt hour battery. So obviously we can't have a battery pack that costs that much in a vehicle that's going to have to be built for somewhere around 18 to $20,000. 50% of the cost of that vehicle cannot be the battery pack. That would be outrageously expensive. So what we need to do is we need to look at how Tesla can reduce those costs. And the first thing I want to talk about is a tweet from just this morning, in fact, a few hours ago, and this is in reference to news that BYD and Tesla were on the outs. And you can see Sawyer Merritt posted news. BYD on Tuesday said a media report saying Tesla is ending cooperation on battery supplies is false. The report is not in line with the actual situation BYD said in a statement to Reuters. And then Elon Musk responded to that early this morning. That media report is false. Relations between Tesla and BYD are positive. So why does this matter? This matters because Tesla is going to be using a less expensive battery chemistry in their next gen vehicle. That's just got to be the case. They've got to go from NMC batteries, nickel, manganese, cobalt, expensive formulations, and lithium, of course, too. But they've got to go from formulations like that to LFP batteries or lithium iron phosphate because the chemicals are much more abundant and it's less expensive to build vehicles with those battery packs. And of course, it just so happens that BYD is the leading producer in the world. As far as I know, maybe CATL is competing with them. But I think in terms of LFP batteries in particular, BYD is the king of the hill for that. And of course, as many of you know already, the Shanghai factory already produces the bulk of their cars are LFP vehicles. Second, and this is a big deal, Tesla was very specific, I believe it was Drew Baglino that said this on Investor Day, saying that Tesla is going to be chemistry agnostic in their battery building facilities. And one of the big advantages that Tesla has is they are you know, building 4680 battery plants as we speak. And as Sandy Monroe and Corey Steuben talk about in their Investor Day recap from a few days ago, the fact that Tesla is able to make these batteries in-house is a massive advantage. Let's take a look at a short clip from that video. Go Technology ahead. aside, why does it matter? You may be watching this like, who cares, Sandy? Who cares, Corey? This is why yeah. it matters. They're stamping those cans inside that plant. We walked by. Right. And they were actually stamping them as we were standing there. Right. They're rolling up the anode. They're rolling up the cathode inside that plant without a 100-yard oven. Plus, upstairs, they've got the... Uh, They've got the powders that they need. Yep. They grind everything up. They put it all together. They do the, the chemical formulation on the fourth floor that they say isn't there, but really is. And then that powder goes down into those machines and they're cranking this stuff out. And I'm telling you what, we were watching them and they spin pretty fast. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is really, really brilliant. Yeah. <clears throat> Back to my point. Sorry, Sandy. If you look at this Rivian cell, Rivian buys this cell. And if you buy it, that means you're paying a profit margin to that supplier. That supplier exists and makes profit because that's how companies exist. So if Tesla's making their own cell, where does that profit cost go? It, it's eliminated. It's right. passed on all the way up through the vehicle. So the more vertical integration you have and the most expensive part of the car is the battery. So they just wiped out one of the largest <clears throat> pieces of profit loss 
by doing it themselves. Right. Then they yeah. also build the packs themselves. Right. Most people outsource pack, pack assembly. Right. There's integrators that build packs. They're building the packs themselves. They're building the seats themselves. They're doing IPs themselves. So as we just heard, the people that got to tour on Investor Day actually got to see the battery manufacturing, you know, jelly roll thing that was going around. This is a dry process again. It doesn't involve boiling off solvents and things like that. Sandy talks about that earlier in the video. It's much less toxic. It's much, much faster to do. I'm a little bit jealous because, of course, I was there and I got to tour the Gigafactory back in August, but we didn't get to see the battery manufacturing. That would have been super, super cool. But anyway, the basic idea here is that Tesla, by manufacturing these batteries themselves, of course, take out some profit because any company, if you make whatever product, if you make a widget, whatever that widget is, you have to sell it for a profit because you have to pay your employees. You have to make a profit for your company. You know, your company has to still exist. And you know, that's reasonable. It's capitalism. It's what people do. But by eliminating this, Tesla is able to eliminate one of the major profit loss areas. Because again, if a battery costs on the order of $10,000 for the entire battery put together and Tesla can build it themselves, Let's say that a company can build it for $8,000 and they charge Tesla $10,000 for the, the cost of the pack, the whole thing, if they put it together, just hypothetically, I know that's not what actually happens because Tesla is very vertically integrated. But anyway, there's a $2,000 profit and that's what the company makes. If Tesla can do this themselves for just the same cost, even if they don't save a penny on it, if they can make it for the same cost, they're only paying $8,000 for this battery pack instead, which means that they're saving $2,000 per vehicle. And if you combine something like LFP technology, if you go with lithium iron phosphate, which is a much cheaper battery to produce and Tesla can produce it themselves. And again, remember they said their vehicles and I believe they also said specifically the batteries were going to be, you know, chemistry agnostic, which means once they get the 4680 up and running, it'll obviously take a significant amount of redo in order to get the chemistry for something like LFP working with 4680s. But you can guarantee that Tesla is working on something like that already. So if you can combine a much, much cheaper chemistry for the battery with the 4680 battery cells that Tesla can manufacture in-house, you're looking at something that will be amazingly beneficial to Tesla in terms of reducing the cost. And then if we get a little bit more speculative, if I turn to this Clean Technica article from the end of 2022, November 24th specifically, there are other rumors that have come about that pretty well indicate this, even though BYD says that they're not working on this, but that there may be a new technology, which is sodium ion batteries, which are even cheaper to produce. I mean, sodium is table salt. <laughs> so if you want something that's really, really common out there, table salt is pretty darn common. And with LFP batteries, lithium obviously is the, is the limiting factor for that battery production, not because lithium isn't around as, t as uh, Elon Musk says, lithium is all over the place, but it's very difficult to extract and refine into the quality that's needed for batteries. So again, you know, sodium ion, that's using table salt basically. So that's another step into more accessible chemistry for creating batteries. And BYD is at the forefront of this. And the rumor is that they may bring out some of their less expensive vehicles in China in the realm of, I can't even believe they can sell these things, but somewhere around twelve dollars to $14,000 vehicles in China this year with sodium ion batteries. So just reading a small section of this article, of course, I'll leave the link to the original in the description. The reason for doing this, assuming the report is accurate, is that the price of lithium has soared in the past 18 months from $5,700 a ton in June of 2020 to $84,000 a ton today. It has come down a little bit since November of 2022, but still it's very, very expensive. Since lithium is the primary ingredient in lithium ion batteries, the search for less expensive alternatives is understandable. The price of sodium is around $3,000 a ton today, so just a fraction of the cost of lithium. Sodium batteries have one important drawback, however. They have a lower energy density than lithium batteries, so you need more of them to have an equivalent amount of energy available to power an electric car. And if we take a step back from this, LFP batteries or lithium ion phosphate, one of the drawbacks that they have is that they also have a lower energy density. And so there is rumor actually that what BYD might do when they release the cars, at least the little bit higher end vehicles, is that they might actually hybridize this. So some of the packs might be lithium iron phosphate and some might be sodium ion, which would give you, you know, a lower energy density. So you have to make a bigger pack or you can't put as many batteries as much kilowatt hours 
into the vehicle as you would with more energy dense battery cells because there's only a certain amount of volume that's available to these vehicles. But the advantage of this would be you would get the benefit of lithium iron phosphate batteries with higher energy density. But one of the big advantages of sodium ion batteries, as far as I understand it at least, is that they're not nearly as affected by cold weather as lithium iron phosphate. One of the big drawbacks to lithium iron phosphate batteries is that they reduce a lot in their range in cold weather, which is a significant issue for a lot of the world in the wintertime when it's colder. You don't want your car to like suddenly only have 50% of the range that it had last summer. So some combination of these two chemistries might be something that BYD might look into and could be releasing as soon as this year. And of course, this cycles back to Sawyer Merritt's tweet and Elon Musk's response to that, that BYD and Tesla have a good relationship. This is something that Tesla, if they're looking forward to future chemistries, is going to be interested in these. Now, they're probably not going to be releasing any sodium ion based cars for quite a while. But in the future, they might do some combination of LFP and sodium ion. And probably the first place they would do this would be in the Shanghai factory. But eventually, this could move to the the Mexico factory. And that actually would be a huge advantage as well, because again, we could be reducing the cost and reducing the cost and reducing the cost of the most expensive component in the vehicle, which is the battery pack. And finally, that brings us back to Mexico. As Sandy Monroe said earlier in the video where he and Corey were talking about Investor Day, he was all about the Mexico factory. He said that in a cost analysis, sometimes Mexico is actually less expensive than China to build things in. And Tesla gets a huge advantage of that. As I've talked about in previous videos, it's only about a seven hour drive between the, the Mexico, the proposed Mexico factory and Giga Austin. So it's not that far away considering that we're in another country. If you compare that to, you know, moving from Shanghai, China to Austin, Texas, you're looking at weeks, right? You're looking at taking a ship across the ocean, docking in San Francisco or Seattle or, you know, San Pedro, California, something like that, and then driving across country to Austin. So these are huge, huge distances we're talking about. And a seven hour truck drive as opposed to something like that is a massive savings. So you're looking at something where between labor costs and you know, input costs, material costs, and things like that. It's rivaling China in terms of initial expense, but you also have the advantage of being very, very close to their headquarters in Texas. And by building this in North America, of which Mexico counts as part of that, you also are eligible for the $35 per kilowatt hour credit for the battery pack and for the $7,500 credit for the vehicles themselves. And when you start looking at something like that, we can just remove the $7,500 tax credit for right now, but the $35 per kilowatt hour tax credit on the batteries themselves, if we look at something like a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack in the bottom of these next generation vehicles, and again, if the vehicle is even a little bit smaller, a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack is much, much less energy than is in most of the Teslas these days, which means that if you have a less energy dense battery, right, you can put more 4680 cells or whatever form factor it is, you can put more of them in the vehicle because you they can take up a little bit more room. So you can just add more cells to make up for the fact that they're less energy dense and the fact that you can charge these other technologies up to 100% all the time. They also don't have nearly as much chance of catching fire because of the chemistries. The electrolytes used in NMC batteries have a high chance of catching fire and they also don't like to be charged to 100%. So, you know, even if the battery pack is smaller and the effective range is a little bit smaller, you can charge it up to 100% every day. And so the vehicle will effectively feel like it has close to the range of the other, you know, current vehicles with bigger battery packs. So we're looking at something where we could be reducing the cost of these battery packs to maybe $2,500 a battery pack, maybe 3,000. This is wild speculation at this point, right? I'm kind of pulling these numbers out of my butt. So, you know, don't trust me on this, but we're looking at something where, you know, it would be reasonable, I think, with all of these technological gains and these, you know, labor cost gains and these abilities to build these things in-house and or get them from BYD and any other supplier like Panasonic and others like that. You know, if we start combining all of these different cost savings, we could be looking at 
potentially thirding the cost of the battery packs themselves. Now that might be a little bit aggressive, but even if it's 50% off, if you drop down from something like eight to $10,000 to four to $5,000, suddenly that starts to get kind of reasonable to build a car for $18,000 or $20,000. You know, you, you can't do that when you have an eight or $10,000 battery pack. You can do that when you have something like four to $5,000 or potentially even less money than that to build the battery pack. So that's why I said at the beginning of this video, it's all about the batteries. If Tesla can't reduce the cost of the battery pack, their giga castings and all of the other advances that they have to make these cars less expensive, you still can't manufacture a car for that cheap if you can't cut, cut the cost of the battery packs. But I think that looking at all of these technologies that Tesla is looking at doing, building the battery in-house, using more advanced technologies that are cheaper to build, use less rare earth minerals, all of that kind of stuff. And don't forget, they're also looking at drivetrains that don't use rare earth minerals. So in a way, they could get rid of almost all of the rare earth minerals, I guess, except for in the, you know, the processing chips and things like that. That requires some of that stuff. Stuff. But they could get rid of most of the rare earth minerals in the vehicle itself in both the batteries and the drivetrain. So we're looking at something that's going to cost less money and is also going to be less ethically complicated in terms of mining those materials. So in short, this is a major factor in Tesla being able to produce a less expensive vehicle. And I, for one, am really excited to see how things go in Mexico all right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. It's been a great 2023 so far. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells, all of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.